when, when Dad was little, he was so tiny that Grandma said she had a name for him. I can't remember the name that she had set up for him. It wasn't one of our uncle's names anyway. He was so tiny that she had to name him Paul. Does Paul mean little? Yes, I think he was less than five pounds. Really? Five pounds or less, Grandma said. Your first baby was very tiny. Very, very tiny. You could be half, half pound? <laughs> Six, two Six foot. Dad? Yeah, he's about... Steve, was, was Dad taller than you? I think that was about 5'11". As he got older, he got shorter. Yeah, five, about six foot. He was, yeah, look at those pictures, the video pictures we have of Dad when he was young. Mm -hmm. And he looked a lot like Dad. Like yeah. what? Like Dad? Yeah. Well, the first thing that we saw Tessa was that she looked just like Grandpa Jersey. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I told him, he said she does not look like Grandpa Jersey because Grandpa Jersey was an old guy, you know. And she looked, she looks like him. She looks just like, we have pictures here. She looks so much like Stephen. Mm -hmm. That we have to have pictures up for proof. And usually, when you, when you look at a baby, and then you you think they look like somebody else until you put them next to that person, next to that picture, and then they, yeah. they don't look like them anymore. Right? But she does. Leah likes this. Oh, she took it apart. It's okay. She took it apart. Okay. I'm taking part washing every day. Oh, she's using the frame faces. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's a good one right here. This is the profile shot. Come on. Talk to Grandma some. Yeah, I was just wondering about if you had any stories that she had told you about Slovakia. Grandma so was talking about Hungary, the Hungarians took over. Yep. They weren't allowed to speak uh, Slovak right? anymore. They had to speak so Grandma was in, Grandma was in, um, in school. Stockholm, she was in Stockholm too. Well, Grandma Jerzak or Grandma Grandma, Grandma Jerzak I thought. Well, Grandma Jerzak. Yeah, Grandma, Grandma Jerzak was born in this country, sorry. She was born in this country. Was she? And I told her I wanted to go back. Mm -hmm. She was like, and she said, what do you want to go back there for? People were treated terribly by the Hungarians. Mm -hmm. You know, they were practically enslaved. They, I, what I read in the book was that, that the Hungarians came and took over the country and basically absorbed the culture of the Slovaks and called it their own. And that was really, really a hard life. taboo. Oh my gosh. What is this? A part to his bike? Here's a uh, Uncle Michael, Leah has something to give you. Maybe you give it to Uncle Michael. He needs it to put Stephen's bike together. I think it's an accident. Oh. Yes, it is. Oh. the story then about the Hungarian not being able to speak? Um, Grandma Milko. Oh, you know, she, she grew up in Stockholm. And, and she said uh, they hated Hungarians. They yeah. hated Hungarians. The, the Czechs were oppressed by the Germans. Oh. The Germans <laughs> and the Slovaks are oppressed by the Hungarians. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they kind of stole their culture. Well, they never. The, what's amazing is they never stole the culture because the the, the Slovaks uh, uh, adamantly held to their culture. Yeah. And they spoke Slovak when they were in school, and they refused to speak Hungarian anywhere but in the school. Yeah, so what's up with those? And what they said, what I read about them is that the Slovak people are so strong-willed that it's amazing that all they've been through, they still have a culture they can call their own. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Czechs like beer, and the Slovaks like wine. Okay. And the Slovaks, and we said basically the Slovaks is when they have their children, enjoy their grandchildren, be left alone <laughs> with their wine <laughs> and their family. Mm -hmm. you know? so what kind of foods did you guys have? Pierogies. Growing up, what else? What was baluska? Baluska. I know glumpies. Are, so I thought baluska was like um, noodles, fried with sour cream or something. Fried noodles. Goulash. Goulash is something different. Goulash should have meat in it. Baluska. Baluska. Are you thinking about baluska? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what I was on your head. What on your head? <laughs> baluska. The baluska is the Russian name for grandmother. Oh, 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 is it? <laughs> yes. And we well, because you look like probably like grandmas. Yeah. We always look, we always have babushkas. Grandma would wrap a babushka around our head. Oh, yeah, that so a cute. What else do we have? Babushka. We had babushka. We had pierogi. We had uh, lumpy. We had <laughs> uh, kalachi. Kalachi. And we had um, zbudnik. Zbudnik. What's that? And, and Grandpa Melko used to call everybody zbudniks. What's zbudnik? A bum. Slow <laughs> 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 We used to have, um, what was it, sausage that was black? Oh, lead sausage. 
Yeah, blood sausage, but it has something else in it too. Kishka. Kishka. Who stole Daddy, the Kishka? Yeah, Daisy yeah, is crazy. Kishka home. <laughs> and there's something. There are some other stuff. Oh, corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage. Um, oh, mom made some really good stuff. I don't know if it's called it was a slow bite dish or not. So, um, yeah, I meant sure corned beef was what Yeah, and the um, uh, spear of the sauerkraut. Neck bones and sauerkraut. Neck bones and sauerkraut. And, and marrow bones. Yeah, you see marrow bones. Mom was saying just the other day, they were talking about marrow bones, how high in cholesterol they are. And mom said that grandma used to say, or her grandma, or her grandma's grandma told her that they used to eat the eat the marrow with, to give them strength. The old grandma used to say they would eat the marrows and the bones to make them stronger. Hmm. And mom said, I was say, I was saying how dad would always take everybody, salt, bread and butter mm -hmm. and take a steaming hot marrow bone. you go, come here, come here. You've got to have this. Go, dad, I want to eat that slop. You know, he's going, come over here, you got to eat this. And you scoop it out onto the butter and melt the butter. Put the salt in the this so good. You know, you go like, so good. Yes. He said, there, eat this, eat this. And he said, there, shove it in your mouth. And you, I mean, you couldn't get away from me. He was so compelling. He <laughs> made you try anything you want. But anyway, yes. and it was really, really yes. good. It was really, really good. It had a whole different flavor to it. I think a lot of it had the butter and salt and pepper and bread. But it was just, uh, you it looked like. It looked gross. It looked like, like, it looked like fat. It looked like a jelly fat. That's what it looked like. It was moving. <laughs> it was coming in. You know? Are you a movie? It tasted good, though. Yeah, it was delicious. It tasted good. And Mom said she never liked it. Because I never liked it. He made me eat it all the time. And I hated it. We all loved it. Mary loved it. I, you know, but there was only so much in the bowl. Yeah, you couldn't take much. And she was like, cook up marrow bones. And he bought marrow bones. Like, oh, great. We're going to get some marrow bones. <laughs> Enough to eat, you know, a couple bites of the sandwich. And then he'd make all his kids eat it. I don't know how much no, he got. No. <laughs> He probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably didn't like it. He no, probably didn't like it. No, I saw it. I saw it. No, he loved it really, really good. He ate pig's feet and blood and tongue he sausage. He used to bring me pig's feet tongue to cook. And I use a toothbrush to clean between the pig's toes. Because there was stuff in there. I thought, these are pig's toes. I don't blame you, Helen. And he would say, leave, I wanted to cut the toes off. And he said, no, leave that on. That's what makes the jello for the afternoon. I was like, oh, gross. It was a kind of syrup uh, thing. Ham hocks. You like ham hocks? Ham hocks. Um, what for desserts? Anything? Mom said she used to make pies, but no one would eat the crust. And she spent hours and hours on the crust, and no one would eat it. They'd just eat the cherries out of the oven. So she gave up on it. She didn't do that anymore. Yeah. She used to, she used to make for a cake. We used to have, uh, Dad used to have Uncle Carl. Don't bump Uncle your head. come over almost every Sunday. They'd come over, and they get a whole case of strobes. And they, it was, it was looked like a, like a pool room of smoke. Remember You're that? You're kidding. No, we're sitting with Roseville. We lived in Roseville. Oh, I wasn't born yet. And we'd sit down, and he'd have us, he'd hand us, give us the empty bottle of beers, and our job was to take the beer bottle, <laughs> go after the garden, open up, and get out another, you know, put it in there. And then they put, we'd put some more cold ones in the, in the refrigerator. We'd be able to sit there, and I don't know if they were playing cards. He was sitting around the table. I don't know what they were doing, because so I was pretty little when we moved. But um, they'd have dinner with us. I remember I used to eat my cake. You know, it was, a, 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 it was Mama put it in a 13 by 9, nine pan and, and put the icing on the top. Then she gave each kid a little piece of cake, about this big. Well, I would eat the frosting because that's the best part. And I asked for wax paper and I roll it up and stick it in the butter container because I figured no one's going to look in the butter container. <laughs> the refrigerator. I save it for later. See the frosting? <laughs> or the, the cake? The cake. I, but the cake didn't taste so good right now. Just the frosting did. But tomorrow the cake, whenever all, everybody's cake and frosting was gone, I still have my, my stash in the fridge. Oh, what else? Let's talk about potato chips too. Potato chips! Oh, I just... once ate a whole pound of potato chips. <laughs> I, mom, we went to the grocery store and mom always bought lots of, lots of you know, cheese curls and, and corn and popcorn and stuff like that. And she'd get some chips and she'd say, you can't eat the whole thing. I beg and beg and beg. And mom gave in to me a lot. So I was so persistent. One of those kind of kids, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, but I snuck the whole bag of chips. I sat in the backyard, ate the whole thing. All my life I dreamt about eating it. Fed, I think potato chips, had a little green plastic cup. I remember it was it was not frosted, it was like embossed on the side, straight down, and it went like this, and it went in again. It was only this high. I hate chips, I smash them in there. Take as many chips as I can smash into this little cup. I hide it in my drawer, my dresser. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They were the best. Did you ever eat them again? I ate them. I'll tell you. 
<laughs> Mom went shopping every Friday. She'd buy a bag of chips. I'd take as many as I could, snatch them in that cup and hide it in my station in my dresser door. Careful, watch and Mary that. found out and made so much fun of me. I was really embarrassed, but it didn't stop me. I still did it. I did it in a different form. <laughs> but I really did that all the time. I did some weird things. Seriously, who did you stash? Did you ever dip in the, um, potato chips in the milk? No, you guys don't. I used to do that. You guys, and, and Cynthia would do that. I think it was Cynthia. I must learn it from her. And another thing with Daddy used to do is every Sunday he'd go up to, um, we lived in Roseville, right by the, the famous Italian Hearth Company, and he'd get this, what, this, like two, three, two or three loaves of just hot bacon bread. That's when they used to give it to you hot. Now they, they have a cooling. This was every Sunday morning he'd get it. we make it real thick and put big slabs of butter on it. Yeah, and he liked butter. Yeah. Butter and everything I do too. And and we had so many kids there. Were, there was when I was two, there was Cindy was one. Patty and Michael were just born. Yeah. Fourteen months young, younger than Helen than, than, than Cynthia. And then there were four older than me, all under the age of six. So there were seven kids under the age of six for six full months. And mom, of course, can you imagine? Yeah. I mean having a baby and having six other what I mean, six other kids running around the house, rampant. So what happens on the morning, Patty would decide to make up. We have Grandpa got us this little table, still in Mom's basement. It's a, it's a, like a gray metal leg. It's either gray or green, like a marble look. Oh, I, I think, think it's gray. It. Is that a formica on top? That's like a formica. Yeah, it looks like 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 marble. It's like ridged stainless steel on the end. Right, ridged stainless steel. It was a little miniature table and had miniature chairs. And yes. Grandpa got that for us. So Patty would take out. And she decided she would make two legs. She get out. Here she is, what, three or four years old, getting a picture out. And she put the she put the Kool Aid in there. She put the she first she started fill up with water. She put the Kool Aid in there, and she whatever stir it. She poured. She, she get the whole kid, whole Come five pounds of sugar. Hey, this little way. kid standing Come up on this little kid chair, pouring it in there, and she tasted it. Wasn't sweet enough, but she poured some more. <laughs> And mom would come out there. Why didn't you stir that up for Patty? She'd yell at me for not stirring up the cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. And I remember the time Michael took a whole. We used to buy butter in the the whole what, one pound. One whole pound. And Michael made snowman. Snowman. We were watching TV and he's under the table in there <laughs> by a light of television making snowman out of butter. <laughs> <laughs> this is all at the Grossville house. <laughs> you say Grossville? Grossville. No, Grossville. <laughs> You were under the table. You were under the table. Up until 1962. Yeah, but what? What street? Fire. I'm not. Uh, it's a fire. Fire. Right? I have a baby. There's Marquette. A Marquette ran parallel with Frazel. Yeah. I think she's sleeping. And we were, we were parallel with she's Frazel. Sleeping? And so. I think, uh, I think she's eating a little right, bit. You know who Frazel is? Frazel's what? Ten and a half Mauro? And nine and a half is Stevens. Ten and a half is Frazel. Yeah. And and we live right right there, right behind Eastgate Shopping Center. I took the kids there after we went to Dan's birthday party, show them all about. And they were on the You wouldn't believe how tiny this, this house is. Because you're a little kid, you got this thing together, this big yard. We had like between the sidewalk and the street, there's this much grass. I'm not kidding you. The curbs that we used to place that flood, the streets would flood, and, the, and, the, and we'd go swimming. We put our bathing suits on and run around in the rain. And the mother would say, this is unsanitary. Right. I remember seeing pieces of gum floating in the thing. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. No. <laughs> and one of the mothers would go, spit that out, spit that out. And they go, no, I, was, I ran, man. I got here. I got me some gum. <laughs> oh, gross. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> we used to have milk yeah, delivered. Yeah, we probably all done that sometimes. Yeah, they probably <laughs> took milk. it up a, under a desk. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Or with somebody else's bedpost. Yeah. And, and we used to have milk delivered by a milk truck. Remember that? Yeah. And the ice man would come. We called ice man. Ice man guy. He was a crab. He's grilling me. And we begged him for pieces of ice. In the summertime, it was hot. He go and go. Oh God! He dog on ice. Go. You got lots of ice in there. We're just like Dennis and Menace. Oh, we see lots of ice in there. And it wouldn't be cold if you didn't have lots of ice. So we chip off some ice and go here, here. Just, you know, kind of shop kids. You know, he did. He wasn't a very kid person. Ice? Ice. We used to call him the Ice Man. I can't believe that they still delivered ice and you were a kid. Well, no, they it delivered ice. It was, it was, he delivered milk, but there was ice in the truck. Oh, they didn't have it for the truck. Yeah, well, right. it, was, it was insulated. There was a little, uh, the little, those neat little, just like the, just like the, just like the good humor guys. Mm -hmm. They have those kind of open up and he go back and he goes, and he goes, I'm going to freeze myself up and we beg him, ice, 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 ice man's here. And I hear a whole flock of kids. He goes, oh God, you're getting me. <laughs> yeah, you're getting me. You want to get out of there.
this is yours? And I remember my mom and dad would have uh, oh, aunts and uncles no. over, and the, and the, this is still at the Roseville house. And we go and take all the kids in the bed, and we say, come on, guys, let's go jump on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a scar on my chin where Paul, I, I was under the bed. I don't know what I was doing on the bed. And this is in my girl's room. Are you a kitty cat? Oh, she's a kitty cat. Hey, nice kitty. Hey, can you find your kitty cat? Did you bring your kitty cat? Uncle Ron got her? What is it? Her white kitty with the pink ears. Can you find your white kitty with pink ears? And she went to Aunt Hill. Yeah. It is so cool. It's in that plastic bag with the food off it. I put it in the truck. Where is it? Oh, we jump on the bed. And Mama comes and swat. No, no, and I was the old I was the instigator. Why did you were under the bed? Were you oh, I, this is the, this is when I was in my room. We were jumping on my bed. And I was Paul on the top, top of the bed. And I was under the bed. I don't know what I was doing under the bed. And a couple of kids jumping in the bed. I don't remember who. <laughs> but this is the one one kitty who needs a lot of attention. Hi, kitty. <laughs> And the and the board slipped <laughs> under the bed and the whole bed fell. The board slipped and got me in the chin somehow. Yeah. And I was and stuck under there. Crush you? They wanted to crush me. I was pretty well stuck. Mom was checking up at anyone. Keep. She had hold of me and she just watched the kids. <laughs> and she and I was bleeding a lot. This scar right there. Hey, that was a bad baby scar. Another time Cynthia fell in the hallway. We used to have there was a asbestos tile. And there was a roller skate. Some kind of roller skate. Now this is well, it, this story might not be true because I don't, might not have all the facts. Huh? Right, but yeah, Cynthia yeah. fell and cut her ear and there's blood everywhere. She had to get stitches. Mom had take her. It was really strange here, and the houses were so how big? Tell how many rooms there? Who took them what rooms? In our in Roseville house? Uh -huh. Okay, no basement. No, no basement. No upstairs. A three bedroom ranch. The bedroom. The, the master bedroom might. This is a room is eleven by eleven. Hello. It might be eleven by eleven. Hello. The master bedroom. Enough room for a bed, uh, a dresser, uh, with a little bit of space go around it, and a crib, right next to the, right, but maybe a couple steps aside. And but you know when you're a little kid, the rooms all look so big. I drove by there just last summer or spring or so. I couldn't believe how tiny those houses were. I mean, you can stand the front door, reach over, and stick your hand practically in the bedroom window here, and over the other room here in the living room window. And the bedrooms were really small. There was wall to wall beds. There was a crib. Oh, you walk in our bedroom door, there's a crib. You walk in the door here, there's a crib here. Oh, did you hear that sound? Bunk bed's over here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. And there was another bed put there. It was a small wall bed. Like one, two, three, four beds in the girls' room. And then there was, I don't remember how the boys' room was set up. They didn't go in there much. We were allowed there because it was Steve's room. You know, we, the girls were allowed in the boys' room. Yeah. You want to tell your the Slovaks have been known for their music and yeah. their love of music. We always sang songs all the time. And Dad had an accordion, and he'd get back from, from work or the bar, wherever he came home from. I don't remember. It's kind of the bar when the bar was closed. He'd wake us all up. Say, hey, Rolf, so play some music for the kids. Wake us up. And quite often he'd have little, like little top hat hamburgers, oh, yeah. like White Castle. They were, only they were red. It's all white with red trim. And he get a whole bag of those top hats. We were really, you we weren't hungry though at three in the morning, you know. We just wanted to go to bed. We pull us out, and we, he, he, and Mary said that this, this accordion box was her throne, and she was a queen. Mm -hmm. And it's red velvet, crushed velvet line. Yeah, it's never was red crushed velvet in line. Mary would sit there in that, in that, that box, and I would beg and beg and beg to go in there, and, and Dad would let us sit there until we all started fighting and make us go to bed. We used to play Ave Maria. Mirzy Dotes, Dotes and Dozy Dotes. And you know, he sings good songs to it. Mirzy Dotes and Dozy Dotes, Little Lambs Dive, Killy Divey too, wouldn't you? Now, did he sing too? Oh, he sang all the time. Oh, yeah? Oh, never really. <laughs> I don't Come know. Come on. You now want to let your dinker dangle in the dirt? <laughs> you put a string right. around it and tie it to your shirt. And I don't you go, think you should. Oh, never really. Like your dinker dinker dangle. <laughs> you were so funny. And we go around I didn't do such a thing for songs. Mom would say, Paul, I don't think that's appropriate. You know, you shouldn't be. And the girls would be singing, never really. Like your dinker dinker dangle. I wonder how many how many birthday parties we didn't get invited to because we sang it. I swear. Oh, no. I'm sure yeah, we yeah, got yeah. the neighbor kids all those ones. <laughs> <laughs> and what else was there? Oh, Dad would always put us on oh, his head and jostle us around all the time when he was kind of tipsy. Mom would go, pump him down. 
Pop and judge, get your finger right here. If they do up, you're going to help you. If they do up, they might do up on your head. You got to wipe it all up, she'd say. Every time. I don't think she ever said. She, was, I, she said she was afraid. I asked her when she was afraid that, that she would drop one of the kids. Well, she was always nervous to buy. But she'd say, instead of saying, put the kid down, you might drop the kid, Paul. You had too much to drink. She'd say, they might throw up all over the Like that was the worst thing that could possibly happen. You know? That was another one. She's going to say, now, what was I going to ask you about? Your grandma Milko. Oh. She came to live with you guys. She did. She was real stern. Grandma Muckle? Grandma Muckle, boy. She I had that wooden spoon. Her. Here, sit here. And you, she would sit there at that table, and she'd make jello for dinner. And she would use it as an enticement to eat all the other stuff, and she couldn't cook very much. I mean, it was awful food, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was bad. <laughs> that was real bad. I mean, bad, bad. And, and then she'd make all this awful food. And then tell you had to eat it, and then put this jello in front of you. Says you can't eat that until you eat this stuff. So we would pass food along, you know, from plate to plate. And you know, Laura, I'm not real, you know, wasn't real diplomatic about it, you know. And Cynthia would always tell on me, and if I took the food and put it on her plate, she go, Mom, Laura's putting all her peas on my plate. <laughs> Another time, we were at the dinner table. We only ate together on Sunday, and we were at the dinner table at Rose. This is in Glenfield House. It did. We're sitting at the table, we're goofing around. Me and, and Paul's making me laugh. He's shooting this corner across him. <laughs> I say, cut it out, cut it out. So he says, he says, eat your peas. I go, I, I started to cry. I go, I don't like peas. He goes, Rose, bring me the peas. And he bring the whole pot and dump my plate full of peas. He goes, eat those peas. I'm sitting there. I put, I put all the peas in my mouth and I go, <laughs> I started to cry. I was hoping that I was sitting there trying to choke down these peas and just, and all the way he's falling across me. <laughs> Pass the peas on the table and pass them out the window. Well, that was at the Barnes house. It was Steve would have his plate by the window and pass them along. But whenever I pass anything to Cynthia, she'd holler on me. I'd get in trouble. I could never pull anything over Cynthia. I was just like, you know. I think she should be. Really, you're in a day apart. So can you imagine what that's like? So, so Grandma Milko was born in. Born in Strapka. Strapka, Strapka, Strapka. Where did she come from? Where did she come from? I have to ask Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Irene, I mean Aunt uh, and Jeannie, she knows. Um, if she came out in 1917, like someone told me she did, she would have been, she's born in 1894. So she would be 23 years old, 24. And that was pretty old to be getting married that in those times. She told Patty some story about being getting try, trying to get away from a bad marriage. But but what happened really was her grandfather was a mayor of Stroke Club, and he put all his... He, he, a cho a chobi. Okay, a chobi. Okay, a chobi. Mayor, sir. That's what Mary told me. I have to put that. I have. A, this really should be verified by Aunt. Um, Aunt. Um, okay. Can you sit down for a minute? Aunt Judy would be the one who would know. Anyhow, um, he sent all his all his grandchildren to the old country because World War One was coming. Though that was in 1917. So if Grandma came over during the war, or before the war was breaking up because of all the raping and pillaging and all that going on. It would have happened probably just prior, maybe 1916, and she would have been 22 years old, 22, 23. And they came to West Virginia where where Grandma was living. It was a, like a small block community. It probably reminded him of the mountain. Wow, that's one thing. Were they strict Catholic? Pardon me? Were they strict Catholic? Very strict. I think. Oh, here comes your kitty, kitty. She wants. Oh, you want to see him? 